Here's a thoughtful question from one of our viewers. What is the difference between chiaroscura and no tan? And that one's really worth exploring. Well, they both deal with light and dark. Chiaroscura is a term that started to be being used back in the mid uh, 16th century uh, when Rembrandt began to use dramatic lights and darks and that's become characteristic of his work one thing one reason why his uh, his work has lived throughout the centuries we can see here in in this painting of I think it's called men with turban but you can see it's got dramatic light dramatic shadows uh, but the no ten, very similar, has to do with finding lights and darks. Are really, really the original uh, use of no ten. It's a Japanese word. It's simply to design with just light and dark. Period. Kind of an abstract design. But in our Western culture, we've come to use the term no ten to define patterns of light and patterns of shadow. Well, we can explore that a little bit more in depth to see exactly how all that works. So before I get into the chiaroscura, let's just look at Rembrandt's piece and look at where the no tan is in Rembrandt's piece. And then to do that, I'm going to do a very quick and dirty study of this, uh, of this painting, the man in the turban or whatever it's called. Anyway, so and this can also show you how you might study masters. One good way to study masters is to, first of all, learn about the master, what their focus is, uh, where their main, or where the consistency is throughout their work, and simply study that. And one way to go about that is this. So here we go. Uh, so I'm just going to do a very loose, a very loose placement here of, uh, of the image as I see it placed there. Just a very, very loose. And so we we'll see that coming down kind of like this. And then we see the, the something like that. Um, oh, I got that. I don't have that quite far enough over there. Like that. Then we see a division. Uh, well, let's, let's do this part first. So, so sort of like this. Um, so the main division of figure against ground. And then we see the division uh, within the turban. We see that division of light and shadow, but if we're just looking for uh, the division of the image itself, of the shape, let's do just a little bit of that uh, so that we can understand what the no ten is doing within that. So uh, that, and then we come down and we see that division of the, uh, of the head against uh, the rest of the body. So that does something about like that. Now we can simply keep the shapes, I'm getting rid of that uh, little excess there. We can simply keep the shapes very, very large and very general when we're doing a study like this. So I'm just going to take this away right here. Now, if we switch our attention to uh, how the light is shining, one thing that we note here is that this feels like a single light source. That was not common in the earlier paintings of Rembrandt's day. The light source was not really usually taken into consideration with painters. They're simply modeling, modeling images according to how uh, light and dark work uh, with defining form. But Rembrandt's concern, or fascination, you might say, was with what a single light source does, and that's one of the characteristics of both uh, of uh, chiaroscura. It is a characteristic of no tan, although we can also show no tan in uh, a diffused light source where light's coming from all different directions. But let's look at what we do here. Now, what I've done is uh, I've just mixed a very a, a light a wash, just a simple wash with ultramarine blue. It doesn't matter when you're doing a, a no tan study; you can uh, you can use a wash of any color but you could also use something like the Tombow pen I often use. But to make this go faster, I'm going to use uh, uh, the wash of ultramarine blue just to show you how we think about this. 
So we, what we do first of all is simply look at fact of shadow and light. Not the man's face, not what the man's wearing, not where he's located, nothing like that. We simply look for shadow. And we do that always when we're developing a no tan. Uh, when we're getting ready to do a painting and we're trying to discover the light patterns, the shadow patterns, this is what we can do. And, and it can make that so much easier to know where to put the lights and the shadows. So here we can simply take this wash and I'm not looking to the background now, I'm simply looking at the at the, uh, the image of the man. And you see that shadow kind of ends about right there, something like that. The shadow goes right down and we don't stop because there is an, uh, there's a shape here, his turban and his face. We don't stop there. Shadow doesn't stop just because there's a change in a kind of image. The shadow has no regard for that. The shadow is where it is. It's a pattern and it falls wherever the light puts it. And so, so what we look for there then is the shape or the angle of that shadow, which we see right there. We see shadow falling right in here because this part of his face is in shadow. So that, that then brings that on over to about right in here. And then we can see that it goes down and shrinks again and goes right, right down into the garment itself. That's what shadow does. It doesn't isolate, as I said before, it does not isolate on a single image, but it goes on down. And we see all this thrown into shadow. All this, and we see as, it's, as the shadow, as it's coming up into this part, a little bit of shadow, we call that an occlusion, but it doesn't matter, it's just shadow right now. Uh, all, but all this is in shadow. Uh, there's some light casting over his shoulder right there. Uh, I sort of missed a little bit of that, but that's okay. And then the rest of this is in shadow. So now we have a division of light and shadow. Now, uh, as a portrait, Many times portrait painters will just create kind of a neutral background so that the emphasis is on whatever the subject of the portrait is. And Rembrandt's done this too. Now we can see in the back, in the background, we see, we see that it's darker as if in kind of a, a middle value, dark to middle value shadow here. It's darker and it gradates to lighter here. I'm not going to put that into the no tan. I just want us to focus on this because we're talking about the difference between no tan and chiaroscuro. So now you know the, what a no tan. The no tan itself, the way we use it, simply functions for our being able to study patterns of light and shadow. We don't study the degrees of value in them at all. So what no tan does not do that. It simply states the pattern. So this, the darker part of whatever, whatever you're using, whatever material, create your no tan. The darker part is the pattern of shadow. The lighter part is the rest of it, or the pattern of not in shadow. Now let's go to chiaroscuro. The chiaroscuro is concerned with uh, dramatic light and or dramatic light and dark, a pattern of dramatic light and dark. So that's one characteristic of chiaroscuro, the dramatic part. The other, or another characteristic, as I said earlier, is a single light source. The, the uh, single light source is giving us that kind of drama. But how is that created? How are we creating that kind of drama? Well, here's the technique that they used, and, or that Rembrandt started this. As far as I know, as far as history knows, Rembrandt is the first one to really use this technique. And what it does is in the shadow area itself, it keeps those values very, very close. So you can see the value scale here. This is a value scale we normally would, would refer to, a scale in value that would go from the darkest dark to the lightest light. We see in this, in the area of shadow, and in here, we see the middle values dropped out. We can see, you, usually you can count on these three right here uh, being dropped out. Now, some, sometimes you will see a little bit uh, narrower than that, but for the most part, if you look, at, you can see here, and if you saw the real painting, you can see it even better. Photographs don't really show us uh, a true interpretation of what we see, but you can see here, if you look, you can see just a, a value, a, 
a very close value difference where they, the folds of his clothing are catching a little bit of ambient light. And you can see the same thing in his face. You see just a little bit of a value difference that ends, enables us to see the modeling of that face. Now if you switch your attention to the light part of it, you see the same thing. You see that in the light part of it, there is just a very subtle value difference, although it, the value difference is right in here, about right in here, rather than being a full range of what you would see uh, in the half tones of light, those middle tones, middle half tones are dropped, and the, uh, the, the definitions that we see are very close in value. Now there's variation in temperature and stuff like that, but the main thing that causes the dra dramatic part of it is pulling those value tones very close uh, wherever it's in light and then pulling them also very close where it is in shadow so you don't really see a transition value that goes from light to shadow. Now those are, that's the main difference between chiaroscura and notan. Uh, the chiaroscura is dealing with, it's dealing with dramatic light. Notan is not necessarily dealing with dramatic light. It's dealing only just with the patterns of light and dark. Single light source, well Notan deals with both single light source and a diffused light source or even multiple light sources. Uh, they're, they're very much light because they both deal with light and dark, but whereas Notan is simply dealing with the value pat or with the pattern of shadow and pattern of light, chiaroscura is dealing with creating a dramatic pattern of light by not having the transition values, uh, the middle values that we normally think of a transition, transition values, but uh, it, keeping the values very close in the shadow areas and keeping the values very close in the areas of light. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.